welcome back to the Roman One Popular Opinions. It is time for my January wrap up, the first wrap up in 2022. Again, this is not going to be a long one because because university and exams. This is about the worst time of the year for me. January through March are endless months for some reason, and I always think I'm not going to read anything, and then it picks up like during summer autumn winter and so on so this might be a bit of a boring wrap-up but let's still chat about it for a little while and because the star of this wrap-up will be Anne of Green Gables I wore my <laughs> Anne dress that I bought last month I obviously won't stand up right now but I still wore the Anne dress because it looks very cool I love it and obviously that's gonna be the main book that I will talk about so <laughs> spoiler alert I guess and again timestamps in the description because we're not all interested in everything and I absolutely get that. The first book that I read is this. I already talked about it in one of my videos, I think in the last tag. So I'm not sure really how to log this as a book, but considering that it exists on Goodreads, <laughs> it's gonna be logged as a book. It got here in January and I read it all in one day. It got here when I was listening to a lecture so I sort of flipped through it during the lecture. I mean, who are we kidding? I was way too interested. But this is essentially exactly what you think it is. It's like how they made the movie. There's commentary from the director, from the animators. I don't think there's anything from Miyazaki, but there is some stuff about him and about his process and what storyboards he gave them. There's a lot of the drawings. There's a lot of sketches. There's a lot of completed stills obviously from the movie and then they explain how they made them what the thought process was what the actual process was and I find these books technically like coffee table books really interesting but they are kind of a luxury item you don't really need them but since <laughs> Studio Ghibli is a great great love of mine and this is my favorite film I thought I would splurge around New Year's I think and get it because it's really really pretty and I wanted some of the comments and how they made it. Honestly I think it could have benefited from a bit more commentary instead of like the full script in the end. I would have loved an interview or something but it was so really cool to see how much work it takes to make a Ghibli film and how they decided certain things and I really enjoyed seeing how they made some of the most stunning shots honestly ever. Like, I mean, I'm not gonna be, I'm not gonna pretend like this is the best story that there is in Ghibli because I still think that would be like Princess Mononoke and Nausicaa, but because those are technically like original works, I know, you know what I mean, they're not really adaptations, but this is the most stunning, soothing, just completely calming film that nothing comes close to it for me. I played this one night because I was feeling stressed out and it just calmed me down all of the rain and all of the greens and the leaves and compared to Arietti and the rest of the little people how big everything is and it's just such a slow relaxing film I cried at the end <laughs> not because I was necessarily sad but just an overflow of emotion happened so I cried in the end and I would recommend it to absolutely everyone. It's a very slow going and just, just soothing film. By far my favorite. We're going to talk about, again, the star of the month, which was Anne of Green Gables. Now, I read this for the first time, December to January, 2020, 2021. So exactly a year ago, like a bit more than a year ago, but yeah, a year ago, I reread this. Because that's when I last rewatched Anne with an E with my best friend. So I picked up the books finally. And again, I will say that I read these books when I was a kid. Books one and two, we had the translated versions and we read them for school. But last year was the first time that I read them in English and that I read more than those two. I decided to reread this again because sort of like Ghibli, I'm just in need of... <laughs> very relaxing slow aesthetic atmospheric stories right now because it doesn't take that much engagement or I don't even know how to explain it doesn't take that much investment so I really really enjoyed that but I read this in a couple of days because it just 
pulls you in in a very unique way because it's not plot driven like you don't really care about the outcome but there's so many little snippets and little things that go on that you just want to read the next chapter immediately and Anne of Green Gables is such a humorous book which is not really anything I expected when I picked it up because it's a classic and very atmospheric so I didn't expect L.M. Montgomery to be so funny and that's I think what I appreciate the most about this Marilla especially like her humor shines a lot with Marilla and Rachel Lind but without talking about this book for about a thousand years because I love talking about this book I would recommend it if you're just in the mood for something really light but still heartwarming there's heartbreaking things in Out of Green Gables but she deals with them in a way that still kind of makes it light. Like she doesn't play the grief in a very depressing way. She just explains it how it is and then moves on to something else, but not in a bad way, in a very, very good way. And I started reading Anne of Avonlea immediately, like a couple days ago, I think when I was coming back from an exam. But yeah, I read this very quickly. I loved it. It was truly a masterpiece. One of my favorite books of all time except for one problem which is I tried watching Anne with an E again which if you saw the video is one of my favorite shows of all time and I got angry which I didn't expect would happen I hadn't watched Anne with an E since before I read the books so now I've read the book essentially Anne with an E just follows this book it doesn't go past that I read this book now twice and watched Anne with an E again and I got so upset at how they changed the entire tone of the story. This isn't a TV show review, don't worry. But I got so upset. I watched season one and then realized that I don't want to watch anymore. And that upset me a little because I used to love that show. And while I think it's probably the best modern adaptation, what really <laughs> drove me up the wall was the fact that they changed the whimsy and the joy of the book into something really dark and all the situations are somehow depressing or sad or there's some kind of oppression or bullying or arguments and I have a lot of issues with Anne and Gilbert in the show which I didn't used to have but after the books I really do so without rambling on too much about that I still think it's the best modern adaptation in our like modern time past 2010 but I really really didn't enjoy how they changed the whole tone of the story because the beauty about this is that whatever she talks about in the first three books at least you don't feel upset about it I think you're more likely to cry of being touched than of being sad so didn't appreciate that shift in the show next one is the last of the novels and I think the last of Tokyo Ghoul in general but that would be the last novel Void. I think there's another novel but I'm not sure if that one's even been translated um, unless it's like online somewhere so this is the last novel that I can officially buy and this one is I don't think it's the third one by publication date but it's the last one by plot so this one takes place after the ending of season one of the anime I think but I don't think it's after the entire first box set so it's like after season one anyway when Kaneki leaves on Taiku. I loved it most of the stories but some of them were just so so boring I think this is my least favorite novel overall but since these are all kind of short stories, I wasn't sure how to rate this. I think I gave it four stars or maybe three. I think four. I think I gave it four stars because I enjoyed most of the stories. But there are two that are just about characters that I personally couldn't care less about. Either they're new or they're old characters that I, <laughs> I do not care about. So I kind of skimmed those or skipped them all together. But the ones that I do know... I enjoyed immensely especially the ones with Tsukiyama for some reason and I will come back to it in the next book but his character and Chie I'm not sure how you read that are a very interesting dynamic that I would love to read more about and I'm not sure if we get much of that in the manga I know we get a lot of it in the novels but not that much in the manga 
if I'm remembering correctly. And there's the last book, which is about Hinami and when she goes to Kaneki's group. And I really, really enjoyed that one. There's also some stuff about Amon, which I enjoyed, but that was a bit more slow going. Let me just, let me find what I am looking for. Yeah. <laughs> That was actually a really, really pretty picture. And I think, I think Sui Ishida drew all of the art for the books. And I really, really love how involved with this he was. And again, I will get back to that <laughs> in the next book. But all in all, without rambling too much, I've already talked your ear off about this. I've read all three novels now. I think they're definitely worth it, but they are not mandatory. They're just very fun if you're looking for a bit of a different medium and more introspection because you don't get that much actual introspection in manga you just get a lot of inner monologues which isn't necessarily the same and I think Shintawada definitely definitely did a very good job so I would pick the books up if you're a fan but if you think you have to I just skip them skip them altogether they're not really required reading again I will get into the next one because I have a couple things to say and that would be sorry illustrations. I read this back in September when I bought it obviously and after the book I had a craving to pick it back up because especially in this first one in this is the first box set that's what I'm gonna call it because this is the second box set and that's how I, how I divide the manga but this is the first box set and he describes all the drawings and his process and everything but he also has like a section where he talks about the books and the art he drew for the books and how he approached certain things and he talks about how he knew Tsukiyama and Chie and their characters way before Tokyo Ghoul. So he really wanted them done in the books. And he like described everything he wanted done with them in the books. And how he actually worked a lot with Shintowada in writing the novels. Because he corrected everything that he wanted done. He even changed some lines and really worked with him in detail. Which I love because a lot of the time they're not that involved with spin-offs or novels outside of their main story but I really loved how Sui Ishida was really involved and he talks about that in here and shows you all the drawings and why he did it a certain way or whatever and like for example this is the new character the one <laughs> the one next to Amon and he says he really loves the design he did for him but this is again really a luxury novel this is the making of the manga he talks about all of his drawings and why he did them this way, what program he did them in, if he even remembers what he did them for because a lot of the time his comments are just, I have no idea when I did this. But he's just a very, very funny individual altogether and I really enjoyed this. There's another one after Tokyo Gore. I don't think I've even really showed that one. That one I like a bit more because he talks a lot more and there's a lot of like Q&As in the ending not anything like that here but it's very fun if you want to know more about him as a person writer <laughs> artist because he's a very very interested interesting and kind of funny individual and I love how really good artists a lot of the time just not put themselves down but think that wasn't their best work like you can look at a stunning illustration and Sui Isha is just gonna be like yeah, I did that in a day. Like, that was just so bad. I'm so glad they never used it. <laughs> and you're just standing there laughing because this is one of the prettiest drawings you've ever seen. So, yeah, that's that's just all I have to say about this. Again, not really a book, but I want to talk about it because it's worth buying if you're a fan. These are all add-ons to the manga. You could just go with the manga, but I think they are very, very worth it and really interesting. Last one is blueberry number six I don't have a lot to say about this one because it was boring it was so boring because it's just it's a standalone like it's not a connected story like the last five were so it just bored the hell out of me it I kept just wanting it to stop like stop talking just so show me some pretty pictures because the drawings are very pretty but I just kept <laughs> skimming and hoping they would get to the point so I didn't really love this. I think I gave it three stars. I'm always very generous with graphic novels because you would just have to be atrocious for me to give it two or one stars. I don't even remember if I ever did that with a graphic novel. 
but I really enjoy the art in this one so I didn't want to give it below three but it's still not a four or five because the story just bored me so much it had nothing to do with Indians they're just like a gang in the village or something and I I did not appreciate that so yeah this was kind of a bust and not a good way to end the month but it was still I guess it was still decent sort of because Jean Giraud is very very good at what he does and speaking of him I don't know why but this is a month that I found out he was very good friends with Miyazaki and he actually named his daughter Nausicaa so and they had like a mutual appreciation for each other and they were friends. I'm not sure if they actually ever met, but that was something interesting, especially because this was the month of Ghibli and Jean Giraud's art. If you don't know who he is, that's Mebius. Now, again, <laughs> was this worth it? I wouldn't really say so. But if you are in the mood for light reading, I guess, pick it up. Wraps up the video very nicely. We started with a great book, ended with a not that great book, and this was very, very short, so I wanted to give the actual books that I read their own time to shine, which was basically just Anne of Green Gables and Tokyo Ghoul. But I still hope you enjoyed because this was a bit of a lighter month and I didn't feel like reading something that would take a lot of time, in conclusion. But what I am reading currently, because this is usually how I end the video, I am still reading Star Wars the Labyrinth of Evil book. I don't know why it's taking me so long. With Star Wars books I'm either in the mood for them or I'm not so I can read like a hundred pages in a night and then I won't pick it up for like three weeks. <laughs> I also started Anne of Avonlea but that was at the beginning of February and I think that's it for my open books. <laughs> Again I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you read in January or if January is a good reading month for you in general because it is absolutely not for me and I hope you found even five seconds of enjoyment <laughs> in this video and hearing me talk about mainly things that I liked because these were some of my favorite series or parts of series in general. So I will see you in the next video.